please tell me why students bunk classes? <laughs> I can tell you why I used to bunk classes. I bunked classes because I found it very boring and uninteresting. Uh, I, I had a lot of questions in my mind. I was a very curious child. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it was not in the syllabus. So every time I used to ask a question, the teacher either used to scold me or tell me that you're asking questions out of the syllabus. And uh, so I found it very uh, extremely draining to sit in the classroom. So I used to just find one or the other excuse to skip the class. And then as I went on learning, I found other reasons. Uh, for example, Humboldt, a very famous German philosopher, uh, said it beautifully in his book, Limits of the State Action. He said, human beings are self-searching and self-perfecting beings, and constant external intervention ends up making them a tool of state. Uh, I, and I believe it to be true. Uh, take say for example, look at the changes in movie industry. In the movie industry, they have employed a lot of new tools to make the movies interesting and fascinating. That's why students bunk the class to go to the movies. Not many students bunk the movies to come to the classroom. You see, first day, first show, the movies are full. The cinemas, they're fighting for the tickets. And first day, first class, when the college reopens, there are hardly any students. Uh, and as teachers, we ought to think, uh, what, are the, what, what are we doing wrong? Where are we going wrong? It's very easy to shift the blame on the students and say that uh, in our generation things were really good, but this generation is spoiled. But if, as a teacher, if I shift the blame, then I have nothing to do. However, if I think I must be doing something wrong, that's why my students don't find my classes interesting, and that's why they're bunking, then I constantly improve myself. I think that that's what every teacher ought to do if their students are bucking the classes. I do it all the time. Uh, however, I'm, I'm seeing there are exceptions. There are amazing teachers who are doing fascinating job, working really hard to inspire their students. But unfortunately, there are exceptions. But exceptions don't prove the norm. The majority are monotonously ticking the boxes. What do I mean when I say ticking the box boxes? Um, writing mindless internals, scoring marks, regurgitating what they have memorized in tests and mindless examination and score marks, mind you, not knowledge. There's a big difference between scoring grades and gaining knowledge. That too to discover new things, fascinating new ideas. Uh, this is the answer for the question, this is the beginning of the answer for the question, why students bunk classes? I can ask, why students find classes uninteresting? And I can try to answer this question in depth. I don't think we have so much time, but still I'll give you a hint. Sociologically, I can answer this question, philosophically, economically, as well as politically. If I take sociologically, what are the things which distract our students? Why do they distract? Do they do it intentionally or unintentionally? Sociological questions. If I take educational philosophy, then I can ask the question, what educational philosophy the teacher is employing? What research-based teaching learning methodology the teacher is using in the classroom to make the classes interesting? Because there's a lot of research being done on it. So that we have to look at whether the teacher is using behaviorism or cognitivism or perennialism. What is the uh, vision, mission, objective, goals of a particular lesson being taught? These are educational philosophical questions. And there are economical questions. Many of the time in a country like India, which is a developing country, students want to finish a degree, complete a degree and get a job. Okay, many of them worried about economic problems. So how does it have an impact on their studies? Are they really studying to gain knowledge or are they studying just to complete a degree and get a job? That also has an impact and we have to think about it. Okay, and, uh, and I'll give you an example for that. Take say 11 and 12, which we call 11 and 12 or first PU and second PU in some places or A levels in GCSC. Uh, there are subject, hierarchy of subjects. If I say A levels sciences, Okay. Second view, first view, sciences. Then there is a hierarchy of subjects, mathematics, physics, chemistry. They do have English literature, but uh, not enough importance is paid to English literature in second view or first view. Why? Because they think they can pass easily. They can purchase a guide by heart, the guide, and they can pass the English exam. They can even score well. However, uh, there are poems like uh, Burning of the Books, uh, Burning of the, which is an amazing poem. Uh, situated in what happened when Hitler was in power and he ordered all the books which criticized his regime to be burnt. So, so there was like a huge funeral pyre but only thing they were burning the books. They were burning books which criticized the government. 
that's a very important political education for students but that's not paid enough attention to because it's not as important as mathematics or physics in science so that has a political impact if I answer the question politically uh, do you really want well-informed students picking well-informed leaders or making well-informed decisions do the regime or do the people in power really want well-informed students making well-informed political decisions Maybe they do, maybe they don't. So we have to think all these things and try to, uh, not just shifting blame on the students. Students don't, do, so this generation is spoiled. That's why they are not sitting in the classroom. Once upon a time, students were so polite. Look at the students now, they are so spoiled. That's not how I think. I have a lot of hope on the younger generation. Just like Einstein, he said, your generation will put my generation to shame. So that's the hope Einstein had on younger generation. So I do have the same hope. But we have to understand how to make classes more interesting. Why students are bunking classes and going to the movies? How can I make classes much more interesting than movies? Uh, and these are the things that teachers, I think, should think.